How about this? Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. You might be thinking now, Joe, Ooh, what did they do last night? Did they sign the extension? Four more years, $175 million, $100 million guaranteed. Nope, 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 nope. Jerry Jones basically saying, I pay enough money. The results aren't what they need to be. And I'm not extending you yep. down the line because if I feel the need to get rid of you and your head coach at the end of the year, the pressure's on. Let me see you perform. Uh, and listen, the, uh, the the shot has been fired here, Donnie, and a lot of Cowboy fans are wondering what the hell took you so long mm -hmm. uh, to begin with here. I mean, the Cowboys and Dak and everything they have done, they have changed everything uh, except for Dak, right? Everything else is they've mm -hmm. coaches, uh, coordinators. I mean, they have uh, they have basically changed everything. The only piece left here is Dak. It's either put up or shut up time, but he really is the definition of, of mediocrity uh, here. He's a pretty good regular season quarterback and ultimately figures out ways not to get his team to win a game a la the Philadelphia Eagles just a year ago, Donnie, and you know this. You take a look at the Dallas Cowboys, too, and it starts with Dak Prescott. Like, there are some games here, and watching the regular season, Joe, it's like, man, the Cowboys got so much talent. Dak Prescott looks so good. But in the biggest moments, like, you talk about the playoff run last year. Welcome in the radio audience. You're watching and listening live to the early line on a Wednesday morning edition. Sirius XM Channel 159 on the Sports Grid Network. He's Joe Ranieri. I'm Donnie Wrightside. Talking about the Dallas Cowboys here, you say to yourself, could this be the year? And even last year fell into their laps. The Philadelphia Eagles collapsed at the mm -hmm. end of the season. You even heard Jerry Jones the day, or probably the night after, that the Arizona Cardinals came into Philadelphia and beat the Eagles, which gave the Cowboys the drivers. He's like, I didn't expect this. Like, the expectations now just got ratcheted up. Like, we can actually do this. Then they show up and play the Green Bay Packers and get annihilated on their home field. Like, the door is yep. blown off the place. And then Jerry Jones at the postgame presser before, actually before the postgame presser, everybody line up microphones, say, hey, Jerry, what do you think about it? He goes, you know what? I don't have any answers here. I didn't expect in a million years to be answering a question. We just lost at home in round one in the playoffs when everything was set up for us. I do like the fact that he's holding everybody's feet to the fire, but at the same time, it's almost at the detriment of the Cowboys this year because if he was truly saying before the season, this is going to be an all-in year, I think we can win it. Him having Dak Prescott at a $50 million price tag. Now, granted, a lot of quarterbacks are averaging $50 million a year, but his cap hit is $50 million. You could have easily lowered yep. that down to $30, $25 million, signed another running back, a wide receiver, a tight end, a defensive end, a DB. You get the point here. Do you appreciate what the Cowboys are doing by saying it's put up or shut up? Or is this at the detriment of, hey, if we added a couple more players, maybe we could have gotten over the top? But they've done that every year, and look at where they get. It's true. <laughs> they Good get, point. you know, so, I mean, the definition of insanity, right, is to keep doing exactly the same damn thing and expect a different outcome, and in this case, with the same quarterback. So I think at some point the line had to be drawn in the sand where Jerry is going, listen, I have paid enough people on this team enough money that we should be getting more results. We won't be spending any more money on other players, the guys that we have, uh, are good enough and they either perform or they're out. I like the move. It's very un Jerry like. Uh, but the reality is it had to be done at some particular point, And this is the season he's doing it. It's crazy when you line the Cowboys up, too, because, again, if you look at the FanDuel Sportsbook, they're favored to win the division, despite not having that splash offseason that a lot of teams around them are having. Yeah. I do respect what Jerry Jones is doing because – and also when he says, like, oh, you know, I trust the coach and I trust the quarterback. To be honest, Joe, he doesn't trust either one of these guys because it's very mm -hmm. rare that you have a quarterback, again, that you say is your franchise guy – you always kick the can down the road, restructure, 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 pay him more money, but also a lesser number against the cap so you can bring in more players to surround him by. And also for a coach, basically a lame duck. And what are they telling him? It's not even, Joe, like, hey, go out and win 11 games this year. The ceiling is right. if you don't get to the NFC championship game, you are all gone, which, again, are lofty expectations, particularly for the Cowboys, who haven't been there since the mid-1990s. So if he had trust, Joe, what would he do? Of course, Dak's going to get paid. We're going to extend it down the line. We're going to bring in better football players. Oh, my coach, you don't think I trust him? Here's a new three-year extension as opposed to sending you into your final year. So a lot of things to look forward to the Cowboys this year. And I don't know if the pressure is going to be able to meet the punch here because if the Eagles end up winning that division, the Cowboys go nine wins, new coach, new quarterback, and away we go down in Jerry World. But things are changing, Joe, in the NFL, which includes that kickoff rule, which means everybody else, you know, it used to be, 
Does anybody want to return kicks on this team? All right, I'll do it. Third string running back. Why? Because he's never going to get to touch the football as it lands in the seats and through the uprights on the kickoff. But now we're taking a look at a, a play that was out of football primarily for it feels like a decade. You take a look at the Steelers going, you know what? We might have something here. Let's get one of the best return guys over the past five to six years in Cordell Patterson signed to the Steelers. Now, he does meet up, as you said, Joe, early in the show with his old offensive coordinator. But I like this signing here. This might be a new wave in the NFL. Yeah, and I mean, I think he's he's pretty good for uh, Pittsburgh, right? Because we all know yeah. that come uh, come in November, December, January, uh, you, you're going to need a guy like Patterson. He's got a ton of experience. You're going to be bringing in some new guys there, and ultimately, uh, he is uh, he is very familiar with the guy that's going to be calling the plays in the offense. So I think that's it's a good move all the way around for not a whole heck of a lot of money here. So I I do think Patterson at this point in his career is one of those glue guys that you want in the locker room when especially when you're bringing in some new changes like a new OC and a new quarterback. I think having Patterson there is a good move. Let me ask you this question, because I need a deep breath on this one. I told you yesterday that I am quite excited about this kickoff rule, because I don't think it's too gimmicky, but I do think it provides what we haven't in the past, a wasted overall play. And it's apparent they're not going to get rid of the kickoff and just place the ball at the 25-yard line. But I saw maybe the repercussions of my love for this kickoff rule might come to fruition next year, and I'm in a panic mode. You know what I'm talking about? The Philadelphia Eagles, my team, I'm embarrassed to say right now they're my team, they have proposed repeatedly for the past couple of years. Forget about the onside kick. Let's go fourth and 20 to get it. You keep the football. I can, it, it's the, maybe the worst rule I've ever heard of in my life, and it might gain traction now. Why? Because there's no more kickoffs in football. So the fact of the matter is the mm. Eagles rule might get put into play because the kickoff rule came into play this year. Please tell me, Joe. Like I, I don't want to see the gimmicks that we have in the NBA's timeout rule to move it in the front court to penalize the football team. We can't do it. Please tell me the Eagles aren't going to get this pushed across the goal line like the tush push. Enough. Nothing. And I mean, absolutely nothing would surprise me uh, at this particular point, uh, because they are not really. It's interesting, Donnie, the decisions and the rules that they're making. They're not they're not talking to the players. They're not figuring out uh, how to make the game better from the player's perspective. Uh, Stop Mm. telling me about safety. It's not about safety. It's about money. That's all it's about. And this is what you think will make you more money.